How to get started in the miniature painting hobby as cheaply as possible, today on Dungeon Craft. If you enjoy our content, why not subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. Thank you. Welcome to Dungeon Craft, where we talk about how to run the ultimate game of D&D, and that means painting minis, collecting minis, building terrain, and dungeon mastering advice. So a few months back I had a video on how to get minis for cheap, and I asked people if they would like a video on how to get into the painting hobby for cheap, they said yes, and this is that video. So I'm a very frugal guy. The thing about painting is this, you want to paint and get into the hobby for as little as possible. There are certain things that cost a lot of money where you don't really get a return on investment. For example, really expensive brushes. Many professional painters do most of their work with really cheap brushes. Other things like paint you really shouldn't cheap out on. I have a lot of colors, but there's always certain colors that I just keep going back to. They're the first ones I reach for, and those are the ones I'm going to be recommending today. Companies like Reaper and Citadel have basic paint sets where you can get like one color of everything. It's like one green, one red, one blue. But here's the thing. Those sets almost never contain the paints that I would buy if I were just starting from scratch. Example, uh, they'll include white when I think that I use linen white. It's like an off-white, way more than white. Also, if you're painting red, you can't just slap red on a model. You have to do several coats. It starts with a brown, almost a brown color, and it will lighten up. You really need two or three different types of reds. And that's not something you're going to get in a, in a basic paint set. So I find like those kind of paint sets, like there are always these kind of colors like orange that I don't really use that much of that I wouldn't buy as an individual paint until I could afford it. I didn't script out this video, I'm sort of just making it up as I go along, just pulling the paint aside and we'll total it up at the end. And I'm going to take you through the whole process from primers to washes to sealing the model. And we're going to be cutting back and forth from our Dungeon Craft New York City studios, where most of our painting is done, to my home studio. So let's go to the studio and start shopping. Here we are in the New York Dungeon Craft studio. And as you can see, it's... that's... That's adhesive time in the background. You can see it's well lit and there's lots of places to store our paint. One of the things you need to have if you're going to paint regularly is a dedicated painting space. It doesn't have to be large like this, but a dedicated painting space allows you to store a lot of stuff and to have it out all the time. If you're constantly repacking all your things and moving them place to place, it becomes really difficult yeah, to... Yeah, you won't do it if you're constantly packing it back. You're right. Yeah. You, you'll end up not doing it or having to spend too much time uh, cleaning up. If you want to paint regularly, you really need a, a dedicated space. Here we have a, a fluorescent light, which is the best type of light, I think, for painting. Because now it looks like day all the time. And we have an additional lamp as well. So here we have my palette exactly the way I left it the last time I painted here. And there are some, some of the projects that I'm, I'm working on. And um, one of the things I like is palette paper. I'm not sure if it's necessary. It's probably about uh, 10 or $15. Seven bucks, I think. You think it's seven bucks? I think it was seven dollars for a box of it. I don't use a wet palette because I don't paint for an extended period of time where I definitely know I'm coming back to paint the next day. I always plan to paint every day, but I seldom do. It's usually two or three days a week. These are the brushes we use. We get them from Hobby Lobby. They have these green handles, and they are $5 for 12 That puts them at $0.50 cents a brush. We were turned on to these brushes by pro painter James Wobble. I asked him which, in person which brush he used, and he said this brush. So we started using them, and they are fantastic. They are. It's really a number three brush. I'm going to put, you, put it next to a, uh, a Winsor Newton Series 7 just as a point of comparison. You can see it's much bigger but it's got a very fine tip so you could do detail with that but at the same point the well of the brush is going to hold a lot of paint and you don't have to keep dipping the brush. Also you could use it as a filbert brush you just kind of press it down and, it, and, and this can cover a lot of model in a very short period of time. So I think I did a video about Painter Barbarian recently and I did it almost entirely I think with if not entirely with this brush. The other brush we use is a number one round synthetic brush called One Happy Choice and they come in a package of 50 for just $20. So that's a lot of money to lay out up front but you're getting like a year's supply of brushes. These are our Games and Gears brushes and this is these are the brushes we use for detail. This is a British company. These are sable hair brushes. They come in zero, double zero, triple zero, and quadruple zero, which I've never used. I can barely see 
the tip of that brush. I guess you use it for eyelashes. I met the owner of this company at Gen Con, and as long as you clean the brush properly, he will replace the brush for life. That's a really great value. However, you don't need these when you're just starting off. Of the small brushes, tiny brushes, you only really need a number zero. I almost never use the triple zero. I use zero and double zero. Zero I use for the whites of eyes and sometimes eyeballs if the, the eye is large enough and double zero I use for most of my eyeballs. The Winsor Newton Series 7 Zero Brush retails on Amazon for $12 and I'd, I'd like to say there's a cheaper way to get around painting eyeballs but there's really not. I know somebody's gonna say paint them with a sharpened toothpick. I've done that, the results are not good. If you have to spring for one brush and you're gonna have to to paint eyes the Winsor Newton Series 7 is the one to get. Just as important is brush cleaner and I recommend the Masters brush cleaner and preserver. You need to clean your brushes properly. You use the brush cleaner like this and then you clean the brush actually on your hand not a paper towel and when you're done you put it in the crease of your palm you twist it into a fine tip and it will dry this way. If you clean brushes properly they're going to last much longer. I know some people are going to say use dish soap but the Masters Brush Cleaner retails for eight dollars and it's made a huge difference in the lifespan of my brushes. Inevitably models come with flashing and there's a couple ways to get it off. One is to get a good pair of clippers like this and especially for metal models this is great. I also have a set of diamond files which I use for sanding metal models. However when you're just starting out you could just get by with a nail clipper and an exacto knife. I'm not adding these onto the price because most people have exacto knives and nail clippers. For filing down models you could just use a metal nail file. So these are aspirational items they're not absolutely necessary. They're convenient though when you've saved enough money and you're into the hobby enough that you can afford them. Here is the Dungeon Craft Home Studio. A couple of things we need off the side not Coke Zero. You need a a jar to put your paint water in. I recommend pickle jars. This is a mason jar. If you enjoy dill pickles, eat a bunch and you've got a giant pickle jar and you can put your water in that. You could use a cup but I find that they tip over easily and a jar has more water and you have to change it less often. Here is a water dropper. This is key. You gotta add water to all your paints, water them down. This is about a dollar. On the side I keep my toothpicks um, for cleaning the bottle nozzles. I have over here some pins. I have a pin cushion that's convenient. And here is my extensive collection of paints. You can see here this is the green section and it's a couple of rows deep. Down here is Reaper Green. But which of the greens do you need if you just could buy two or three? So time to get shopping and we're gonna go over which paint you need. Every paint job begins with a primer, and I'm going to recommend two. The first is Reaper Brush-On Primer, and the second, the spray primer, is Citadel Standard Gray. Now, why Brush-On Primer? Well, there's a couple of reasons. If you want to paint individual models and you don't want to waste spray paint, you can just brush on the primer. Also, Brush-On Primer won't obscure the details, so if you're trying to paint an individual single model and you want it to look really great, Brush-On Primer is a better choice. Also, you could paint with it indoors. So that's an advantage in a month like now. It is January as I'm filming this. January, February, March, July, August. When it's too hot or too cold, the humidity makes it difficult to use that spray primer. So a brush-on primer is a must. So for a spray primer, I'm going to recommend Citadel Standard Gray. You're going to use a spray primer when you want to prime a bunch of models all at once. Some people use an airbrush for this, and the great thing about an airbrush is you can use them indoors, but a good airbrush is something like $170, and you don't need that when you're first starting out. Now, someone in the comments is inevitably going to say, well, I use Krylon, and it's just fine. Krylon primer can be just fine, or you could get, if the humidity is too high, a lot of powderiness, whereas with an expensive primer like a Citadel or an Army Painter, it's a much smoother, more even coat. The propulsion on Citadel's paint, I like it the best, and I've never experienced that powderiness. Now, why gray? Black is the best choice if you're going to paint a lot of models and they're mostly armor, like these guys. In the case of these Kingdom Death minis, gray was a much better choice because black, I would have had to do way more coats of flesh. 
Gray allows a happy medium where you're able to paint up or paint down. This cleric, which I'm going to show you how to paint in an upcoming tutorial, is an example of painting up. Her cloak started out as gray, and it was gradually lightened to this linen white that you see here. Both of these models started out as gray, but I painted them down. I gradually darkened the colors to achieve the looks that you see here. I also have black, I have white, I have brown. I paint a lot of models in brown. did a commission job with Gloomhaven figures, and I actually primed them in brown. But if I could only choose one color, I would do gray because it's the most versatile. Okay, the first two colors we're going to get, black and linen white. Again, I almost never paint with actual white white. I find it's too bright. I constantly paint with linen white. These are both from Reaper. This is pure black. Any company will do for black. Black is black. I like the consistency of Reaper, so I'm going with that one. So this is my flesh palette, and from left to right we have Barbarian Flesh and Tan Shadow by Reaper, Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh by Citadel, and High Pigment Maiden Flesh also by Reaper. And you could get most complexions out of these colors. These minis are by Kingdom Death Monster, and they show the wide variety of skin tones you can create with this palette. Dark skin, pale skin, olive skin, tan skin, all here. If you're doing male Caucasian skin, it's going to be more bronze. It's going to be more like barbarian flesh or tan shadow lightened up to Kislev flesh because men spend more time outside. Women have more rosy complexions, so you'll begin them with Katie and flesh tone, lighten them up with Kislev flesh, ending with maiden flesh. Here's the color palette for blonde hair. I'm assuming some of your models are going to want to have blonde hair. You always start with a sort of medium brown, and then go to blonde shadow, then blonde hair, and then you get to blonde highlight. So this is blonde shadow with blonde over it, and this is the whole tri-colors. Going from blonde shadow, blonde hair, to blonde highlight. And you can see it's got a very flaxen appearance, and that's the difference. I have a wide selection of gray, but if I only had to choose two, I would choose these. Vallejo Neutral Gray and Citadel's Administratum Gray. Is it Administratum? Yes, Administratum Gray, and I'll show you why. If you look, Neutral Gray is a bit darker, but it's not the darkest gray can get, and Administratum Gray is lighter, but not as light as gray can get. For a comparison, I'll show you Misty Gray by Reaper, and this is Basalt Gray, also by Vallejo. You can always add a drop of black to make this look like that. And you can always add a drop of linen white to make this look like this. So these are the perfect mid-grade colors, and uh, I'm going to recommend them. These are my four browns. I always start out with Reaper's Basic Dirt. I love Steel Legion Drab for things like leather. And then I have Reaper's Terrain Khaki and faded khaki. Using Citadel paints, Terrain Khaki is Carrick Stone. It's a tan color. And Faded Khaki is Citadel's Baylor Brown. So I often use them interchangeably. You can paint everything from rocks to boots to belts to scabbards to cloaks. Next to brown, green has the most variation. I start my green models with Reaper Pine Green, then move to Citadel Strachan Green. If you're using Reaper, Citadel Strachan Green is the same color as Reaper's Meadow Green. I also have Olive Drab if you want more of an olive color, and a Pale Green if you're painting orcs or goblins. This wide variety of greens was achieved using this palette. When I paint with red, I always start with, I think it's uh, Clotted Red, Reaper Clotted Red, then I move to High Pigment Crimson, and then I move to Vallejo Flat Red, which is a great bright red. Red is a color that has to be built up over time. Let me show you what it looks like. This started out as brown. Uh, it started out as like a, a darker brown, then moved to clotted red, then highlighted with crimson. The very top of the folds are, are highlighted with the flat red. I'm going to recommend two blues, a darker blue and a lighter blue. For the darker blue, I choose Citadel's Calidor Sky, which is a really great color. I love the consistency. I love the way it comes out of the pot. I love the pigment. And this is Reaper's Sample Light Blue. I got this free with a shipment of, of Reaper models, but it, it's a great light blue. I'm also a big fan of Reaper Heather Blue. This model was painted with Heather Blue. It's kind of like a denim kind of look. 
but you could achieve a similar look by painting starting with a base coat of Calador Sky, lightening with light blue and giving a wash and further highlights. I struggled for years to find a great yellow and these are the ones I like best. I like as a base Averland Sunset and over that Uriel yellow. These yellows have a great pigment. They're very bright. They cover in one coat. I don't paint with a lot of yellow. Incidentally, the base color for yellow, you want to start with brown, move to Averlin Sunset, and then to Uriel yellow. These pants were painted with a combination of Averlin Sunset and Uriel yellow, and I think they came out looking pretty good. I seldom paint with purple, and it was a very rare color in the Middle Ages because it was reserved for royalty. This model was painted using Jean Steeler purple and Druki Violet wash. So I have a lighter purple, and I just wash it a darker color. The skeleton underneath was originally brown and painted up to Ustapi bone and then to linen white. So I use Ustapi bone for a lot of things like skulls, but also things like kind of cloth that's dirty looking and not a bright linen. So Ustapi bone is definitely a keeper. So these are our favorite metals. They're made by scale color. This is heavy metal and this is thrash metal. Metals. I find that they're the most inconsistent paint with a lot of separation of the pigment. Scale color is always consistently good. It's it's perfect every type of paint. So we here have we have coppers and bronzes. If I were only going to pick uh, two colors, I would pick this gold, and I would also pick the lighter silver because you can always wash a silver down to make it look darker and highlight it with this. So if I only had to pick one, it would be this silver heavy metal. These are my washes, or what painters refer to as liquid talent, and they will take all your models to the next level. I use Citadel washes because I think they're the best. They come in the largest bottles. They are expensive. They're $7.99, so they're $8 each, but I find them indispensable, and you can see by the levels, the lowered levels, how much I use them. Nolan Oil is black. Agrax Earthshade, which here is almost gone. i got to replace it. That's brown. Athonian Camas Shade is green and I use that for painting goblin flesh. Drakenhof Nightshade is blue, Druki Violet is purple, and Reichland Flesh Shade I think is the best flesh wash. So you really need all of these. I, I find them indispensable. The one I use least is Druki Violet. If you're never going to paint with purple then you can leave that one off the list, but I have a tough time cutting any of these. Another must-have product is Army Painter's Strong Tone Quick Shade, which is what I use when I want to paint a lot of monsters at once. I use this product on all the monsters you see here. Let's take a closer look at them. This Dancing Girl Skeleton Orc and Ghoul were all painted in moments with this product, and the skeleton was painted by my son, and it was his first mini ever, and it looks pretty good. You can achieve these tremendous effects really quickly with this product. If you look online, it's available on Amazon. I don't know why it's really overpriced, $30. I get it at my local hobby shop for $24, and it is well worth it. It's one of the best products. Um, it'll protect the models. It'll protect their finish, especially models like Oryx and stuff that get a lot of use, and you're always wiping them off the table because they get killed quickly. Um, but I, I find it's an invaluable product. I was going to leave it off the list, but then I thought... You know what, looking back at my painting videos, I, I, there are so many of them that use this product that I had to include it. And that brings us to sealers, the last line of defense between your models and your player's Cheeto licking fingers. So I use Reaper's Brush On Sealer, that's particularly in the winter time, and the standard which is Tester's Dull Coat. It comes in these short little cans, the label is blue and white, you're going to have to take my word for it because it's got this label that when you take the, the top off the can, the label comes off. Okay, here's the complete list. So miscellaneous, we got our palette paper, our green brushes from Hobby Lobby, our one happy choice round number one brushes, and the Windsor Newton Series 7 size zero brush. Altogether, that's going to equal $45. From Reaper Paints, we have primer, black, linen white, barbarian flesh, tan shadow, maiden flesh, blonde shadow, blonde hair, blonde highlight, basic dirt, Terrain khaki, faded khaki, pine green, olive drab, pale green, clotted red, crimson, light blue, and the sealer for a total of $70. Citadel paints, again, grouped by color. One, standard gray primer, which is your most expensive purchase at $20. Cadian flesh tone, Kislev flesh, administratum gray, steel legion drab, strachan green, calador sky, Averland sunset, Uriel yellow, jean steeler purple and Ushapti Bone. 
for a total of $60.59. You get Citadel paints for about $4 on the Games Workshop website, but I actually found them at Miniature Market for $3.69 each, which puts them at the same price as Reaper. Also, stores that stock Citadel may have occasional sales if you go to a brick and mortar store, so be on the lookout. Citadel washes, Agrax Earthshade, brown, Ethonian Camishade, green, Drakenhof Nightshade, blue, Druki Violet, purple, Nuln Oil, black, and Reichland Flesh Shade, which is flesh wash, $36. For our metals, we use scale color, heavy metal, silver, and elven gold, $9.98. Vallejo, neutral gray and flat red for a total of $9. I pick up these paints at Hobby Lobby. They carry the Vallejo line. Army Painter, strong tone quick shade, $24. And finally, Tester's Dull Coat Spray Lacquer, $9.35 a can. Although, you can get some deals on Amazon where you pay $24 and you get three or four cans. So, that would be a good deal there. And the grand total final cost comes to... $253.92. This might seem like a high entry point for a new hobby, but consider it the price of a new video game console, for example, or any hobby. Skiing, snowmobiling, hockey, racquetball, any hobby is going to have a few hundred bucks of expenses. And the best thing about painting is you're going to be able to do this. You'd be able to paint with this much paint every day, at least five days a, a week for an hour or two a day, and you're still not going to run out of paint for a year. Plus, you're never going to have to go to an emergency room, and I can't say the same for my friends who enjoy skiing and ice hockey. You could always cut down on some of the expenses by, say, cutting out the quick shade or a couple of paints like Barbarian, Flesh, and Tan Shadow are very similar. You could cut back and maybe only buy half the washes for now or go with Army Painter instead of Citadel Paint for the spray primer. But considering how often I paint and considering I've really been doing it seriously for the last three years and I'm still not done with my, my Reaper Black Paint, for me it's a reasonable cost. So that's my advice on how to get into the painting hobby for cheap. Questions, comments, anything I missed, please put it below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And there is tons of back Dungeon Craft content waiting for you. So you should check that out. Once again, I'm Professor Dungeon Master. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the table, and may all your rolls be 20s. If you enjoyed today's content, click the Dungeon Door logo to subscribe to the channel and the bell icon to receive notifications. And be sure to follow us on Twitter, at DungeonCraft. Thank you.